All right, everybody, welcome to Swim Bait Mania. Over the next few days, I'm gonna be pouring a ton of swim baits. You'll probably actually see some of these baits available on the Instagram for sale. I, I held up two fingers, I meant for sale, um, before you actually even see this video. So, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. We're gonna be pouring a lot of different baits and a lot of different colors and a couple different sizes. And um, you're just gonna see a lot of different things. Um, and I think it'll be kind of fun to watch. So, not much chit chat in this one. No, no big long drawn out intros. We're just gonna hop right in, and uh, let's go. All right, we're gonna start out with that AI four inch hand pour. Let's take a close look. Looking good, man. I just I love the look of a bunch of molds all lined up and clamped. That gets me going. So, we're gonna be running dead on plastics, of course, and there is. The angling AI sticker and uh, I'm not sure what color I'm doing yet oh you know what I made this emerald shad color that uh, that everyone seemed to, um, to to really like so hey I'm gonna show you how to do that one yeah so this is actually like a brand new bucket essentially I've only used it once so I need to give it a, a, a pretty good stirring so I just take this uh, hand spoon here stole it from my wife and she hasn't asked about it and I've had it out here for about two years so I think at this point I'm probably in the clear but I'm just gonna do this for a minute or so and uh, and then we'll be all good I won't have to remix this bucket all day so I, I at least mix once every day that I'm out here if I go three or four days without making baits no worries just mix it up once and then you're good for that day so I'm gonna keep mixing a little bit and meet you back at the table all right, we got the griddle cooking. Molds on the griddle, looking good there. And let's jump over here to the actual color. So I call it Emerald Shad because I'm using Lureworks Emerald Green. So the bottom is this color shift from Dip Your Car, ZGA. Emerald Green vein in the middle. The top is a hyper shift, CTF. Look at, just look at the color shift there. From, also from Dip Your Car, if you want some of these pigments, follow the affiliate link in the description below. Select the Pearls tab, and any purchase you make there helps me out. And uh, I mean, this this stuff is next level. So there's just there's just no substitute for these pigments. So the end product is really beautiful, and uh, it especially looks good in that four inch. Okay, let's add this ZGA. Here we go. If I can get some, almost out of this stuff. And we are not adding much. Just enough for you to get the effect. All right, we're gonna finish pouring up this bottom layer here. So I'm only pouring it just to the top of that hook slot. <clears throat> Boom. On to the next one. And you can see there's just a little bit of that color effect in here. It's essentially a clear bottom. And when you're running the uh, Dead on Plastic Swim Bait Blend, um, it's a particularly clear blend of plastic. You know, the more, the more firm a blend is, the more resin it's going to have. Generally, the less clear it is because, you know, the resin just doesn't cook as clear as, as the uh, plasticizer oil. So the lighter your blend is, the less resin, generally the more clear. All dead on blends are, are pretty clear in my book, but this one, this one uh, really does a good job. Next up, we're gonna mix up that emerald layer, and that's really what makes it shine. All right, yeah, so here's the next cup. Like I said, that stuff is pretty darn clear. I uh, stirred in a few bubbles there, but that's always gonna happen. So now we just need a few drops of this emerald, but I don't need much. I'm gonna try like three. See how that goes. All right, there's three drops. Because that stuff is pretty concentrated. And what makes this bait special, I think, is how see-through it is. That's, yep, that's all we're doing. That is it. That's all we're doing. Let's get a close-up. Yeah. You know what? That's out of focus. Eh. Yep, that's it. All right, now let's hit these last three on the uh, vein color. 
I like to pour just enough to get it past the end and down towards the eye sockets. It's, it's totally a feel thing. There's no real way to measure this out. You just kind of have to know how far that plastic's going to run. And generally speaking, it's, it's pretty even. I love it when I have a new bucket or jug of plastic and it comes straight out of the microwave, completely bubbleless like that. No vacuum chamber needed. You know, I, I might stir bubbles into it, uh, stirring the pigment in, but man, when you have good plastic right out of the bucket before moisture can have its chance to ruin the party, that's, that's how good that plastic comes out right there. Now we're gonna add this uh, ZTF. And again, I want to try not to oversaturate it. I don't want to add too much of this because it can look, um, it can just kind of throw off the whole see-through vibe of the color. So, allow me to start stirring here and just see what we can get. Yeah, that might take a minute. Yeah, but well, we will meet you right back whenever this is stirred in. Okay, I've already got a few of them poured. So there is the color. And I had it mixed up just right, and I'll show you what I mean after I'm done pouring these cavities. I, um, it's still see-through enough that when I look at it from the top, I can kind of see a hint of the green. So that's good, because I, I didn't want the top layer more saturated than the other layers, or else it would just kind of throw off the, the balance of the colors, I think. So anyway, we're going to uh, finish these out here. All right. All about that hand control until you screw it up. That's what I'm talking about right there. See how it looks like an illusion from the top? You can still see the emerald green through that entire top layer. And that is exactly the look I was going for. Not, not so saturated that you still couldn't see through it. Um, so I'm thinking these are gonna be pretty bomb when they come out of the molds. All right, let's see how we did. Drum roll. All right. Hopefully this looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah. There it is. Check it out. Let's see if we can get a close-up. Stay in focus. Come on. Yeah. Isn't that cool? All right. Mission accomplished. Okay, so I have them all laid out and uh, looking cool. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one out here. Yeah. All right. We're going to take it out of the mold. And then we're going to contrast it. Compare and contrast. Here's one of the ones I made the other day. So you can see a lot of consistency there's actually a little bit more of the top pigment in the example from the other day. But pretty much the exact same pour. You can see there from the top, I put a little bit more of that hyper shift in the top uh, the other day than the ones today, but that is how you do that color. I mean, that is pretty much spot on. So yeah, super, super cool. Emerald Chad. So for real, this um, emerald meltdown or this remelt right here, doesn't that totally look like jello? All right, we got round two poured. Looking good. All righty. And y'all know how it goes on this channel. Got to enjoy yourself while you're out here. All right, there's round three. Last one we're gonna do of the four inch emerald shad. And after this, we're gonna go big. Next up, we're going big. This is the biggest swim bait mold I've got. This is the eight inch Stink X bait ribbed swim bait. 
and uh, you can see that it's a monster. So I've got three colors laid out here. We're gonna do some trout. All right, so these silicone molds, we don't pour them on a heat source necessarily. However, we will use a heat gun to heat them up later whenever we need to pour the next layer. So this one here, I like to pour it just to the top um, where those uh, ribs start. This big mold here. Yeah, just about right there. And they're not perfect being that it's silicone, but uh, you can still pour really, really even layers regardless. So that is of course the goal. So we'll kind of take a look here. It's exactly what we want. All right, and a trick I like to use is a heat gun on my silicone molds because this layer, I can touch that. That has now kind of set up. So I need to re-melt it, so to speak, tack up that layer so that this next layer, my uh, red vein, will bond to that. And not only bond to it, but bond to it really, really, really strong. And we're just gonna pour it all the way up. I don't care if it goes into the head. I just want it to go past the tail. So right in there. All right, we are back. We got the first mold poured. We're just gonna show you one. So again, I'm tacking up this top layer, getting it real hot, ready to go. Takes it a couple seconds to really get that top layer from the head, because I, I want a good bond up front too. It's not just about the tail, which is where most of your delamination occurs, but you also want a strong head um, which is where the bait's going to be rigged. So, anyway, we tacking, we tacking, tacking some up. Let's get that tail real good. I want to hit that hard for a few seconds. All right. And I'm pouring this at a very low temperature to try to minimize the amount of flake settling down to the bottom, which is what it likes to do. Ah, see, over poured that, but that's fine. And I'll just pour it up to the front. And we're done. All right, here they are. They're our big eight inch bling trout. Looking nice and flashy. And once these have eyes on and some clear dip, gonna be sweet. There's actually round three of our uh, first color there. The emerald shads in the four inch. Yep. So, took those out, and they are taking a nice bath. We'll lay them out with the other ones over yonder and uh, move on to the next thing. Next up, we're using a mold we have not had on here in a while. This is the old Bob's Tackle Shack swim bait mold, the open pour style. Um, you can actually find a couple of companies uh, selling baits that are from this exact mold through uh, Tackle Warehouse. So, uh, this is like the OG of open pour swim bait molds infamous in the bait community it's discontinued so they're really hard to find but this is a six inch bait and we're going to make a very light hitch sort of color in it using Lureworks green pumpkin that right there for the top phthalo blue for the mid uh, vein and then a little bit of white pearl for the belly and uh, we're going to be making this very 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 see-through so not a lot of color saturation, and uh, we're gonna do that next. All right, here's our white pearl belly. And as you can see, there's not a lot of white pearl in it. So you know what, we'll start with this one so that you can see. And it's uh, real similar to the AI pour. I'm gonna pour it just to the top of that hook slot, which will actually fill in this little uh, tail fin in the back which is what we want to do. So we want to pour it just inside that little tail fin in the back because this mold does have a few fin features. And I think it looks good when the belly color is poured all the way in to that little fin feature there in the back. All right, we have our blue veins poured and now we're just gonna mix a little bit of that green pumpkin in and that'll be our top color and we're done. All right, and now we are pouring the top color and you can see 
I mix this top color up pretty see-through. You can still kind of tell where that blue is, so to speak, below it. So um, definitely got it like I wanted it there. I didn't want it oversaturated. I don't pour this mold all that often anymore, so it's kind of fun to pour something a little bit different and kind of relearn how it pours. You know, the belly color on this one generally pours a little bit further down towards the tail than on my uh, AI molds. Just a, just a different shape, a different taper. So, real interesting there. But uh, there it is. All right, so it is the next day. I let these mold cure overnight. And there it is right there. Yeah. Light hitch. I absolutely love this pattern. So, we'll uh, take it out real fast. And there they are. Now this mold, um, much like the uh, ribbed mold that we did earlier, the big um, bling trout rib baits, this one uh, really needs a clear dip on it. It just, it looks better with a clear dip. So later on, once we attach the eyes, we'll do some clear dipping. But um, now we're gonna move on to some injection swim baits because you can't leave that out. All right, so we have the four inch bloodline swim bait, which is an injection mold. So uh, if you look here, it's, it's a single top port injection. And uh, this is an angling AI creation. And it's really cool because it has a matching bloodline mold that just creates these little worms. They're almost like little trout worms. And you lay those down into the mold and then you um, also insert a soft plastic eye. It's not like, it's not a uh, epoxy 3D eye, it's a soft plastic eye. And you can then inject the mold um, from there and then whenever you take it out, you have a three layer um, laminate essentially because of the line and it already has the eyes fused onto the bait. So. It's a really, really awesome uh, concept. You know, I, I always say the bloodline swim bait mold, it's not just a mold, it's, it's a system. And uh, it, it's the coolest one out there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a baby bass. We're gonna whoop up a uh, pearl for the belly color and then like a watermelon top color with some uh, various flakes in it. And uh, I think these are gonna look super cool. Okay, here we go with the bloodline swim bait. Top side is um so so the top of the bait where i want my watermelon color is the left side so the left side of the blending block i don't have to i don't i don't want to do it that way i need to do it that way so here we go and again it's single port so one one port per bait I like to hold a little bit of pressure to really try to get those tails to fill in. You could actually hand pour this one as well. Because it's a top port injection, you can actually hand pour this mold. Which uh, is a cool way to get really cool swirls. You can't necessarily pour a perfect laminate. At least I haven't figured out how. But you just want to Take your uh, divider cup or a solid color and uh, pour this mold. It actually works out quite well. So, all right, and last one here. Don't want to forget that one. There we go. Let's open one of these up and see how we did. Sometimes they'll like stick to the tops there, yeah. Alrighty. Oh yeah. There you go. A baby bass. Yep. I love the look of the black line. You know, I could have actually made the lines a little bit more concentrated. You can see they're not, uh, they're not like way darker than the rest of the bait, but it has a nice natural look. So all in all, I'd say I'm very happy with those.
All right, there are our baby bass. You know, they, they, they even look like little juvie bass. You know, that, that looks like the little fingerlings that they uh, stalk in a pond. So, super, super cool. Yeah, now we're gonna finish this up with some hand pour trout. I know we've already done the trout. This one's gonna be completely different in the Angling AI six inch hand pour. I don't know if I'm gonna get to it today. So I might see you guys on a different day, but either way, we're gonna cut to that now. All right, everybody, we are on the final uh, bait that we're gonna make, and we're really gonna shoot for something special here. This really should be a video in itself, and I may actually do that. Um, because I'm not going to be able to show you very much of this just because this video is just going to be way too long But I have a ton of stuff down here and we're going to try to go for a really special trout color Let's take a look at it Okay, so when the molds are split open, you know some uh, Intricate hand pouring is about to go down Look at this beautiful rainbow trout pattern It's got like an orange belly it has these sort of blue grayish dots, this pink center line. I mean, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. This is a Sierra Mountains trout. So that's what we're going to try and do is something like that. So um, you can see I have a ton of colors picked out here for this. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to need every single one of them. So I'm going to skin pour the little uh, kind of grayish blue dots, of course skin pour that pink line okay and then we're going to pour the orange belly kind of with that molted gray watermelon top it's hard to tell exactly what it is but lots of steps involved i'm not really going to show you all of them i'm just going to kind of meet you back whenever we have something done um, this is going to be quite a challenge but let's see if we can pull it off Okay, so let's take a look at this again. I believe it's a cutthroat trout or something like that, a Colorado cutthroat. Um, so there's the goal. And here is actually our second attempt. The first attempt was very bad indeed. Like, I'm not even showing them. They looked like a toy that came out of a Happy Meal. Um, so here's the second attempt. And I ran out of camera battery while I was pouring this or else I would have shown you a few steps along the way But I can kind of talk about what I did so um, And it's actually the next day. I let them sit overnight. Oh You know, that's not half bad. Look at that Let's um Yeah, Let's zoom in there Yeah that's really not too bad. Yeah, boy, I shouldn't have made so many because now I have to put eyeballs on all of those. Yikes. Well, we better get started. All right, here's something you hadn't seen on my channel in a while. Clear dipping. Yeah, we haven't needed it in quite some time. Which is nice. But these molds right here look so good with a nice shiny coat on them so we're just gonna kind of let that nose drip a little bit till it's ready to uh, you can you can basically just kind of take that little tab and and uh, pinch it off okay wait till it sets up a little bit then this I mean you definitely need a bath for that and there it is then I'll show you one of the uh, BTS molds. I don't like to dip those as far. Only past the hook slot, which really clear dipping a hook slot is a foolish thing to do because it seals the hook slot. Then now I have to cut those, but uh, it's not, not too big of a problem. So anyway, you can see I only dipped it up to here because you really don't want to clear dip your tails because you know, you're adding weight and mass to your tail which will limit the action so there are our two dipped baits right there okay everyone there is the spread not bad for one video so let's kind of zoom in there so we have our uh, lovely cutthroat trout they're, they're growing on me they look better 
laid out all together with their eyeballs on for sure. We have our big bling trout and uh, that clear dip kind of brings out some of the shine and the blinginess to it. We have our BTS molds up there in the uh, light hitch. Yeah, looking good, looking good. Oh, bump the camera. Then of course down here we have our uh, injections, right? So there's our bloodline swim bait and the baby bass. And then tons of those. So that was 27 of those. And uh, boy, I really enjoyed putting those eyeballs on. Let, let me tell you that. But uh, yeah, these these actually are growing on me. So a couple more tries, and I think I'll have it um, exactly how I want it. But really cool stuff. So uh, yeah, lots and lots of different different styles, shapes, sizes, uh, techniques, and colors, of course, today. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and. Whenever I do videos like this where I make a bunch of different things, I'm always so excited to hear which one is your favorite. And just one little quick kind of glamour shot. We'll just do a pan of the whole thing here. Yeah, super cool. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was sort of a different episode today, but I wanted to make a ton of swim baits this week and figured I would take you guys along. And uh, yeah, that right there is quite a tray of goodies. So thank you guys so much for watching. Shoot me lots of comments below. And as always, we will catch you next time on the world's worst fishing.